Hey there! If you are a returning visitor to the channel, you might remember that uh, I made a video about a piece of software called IoT Link, which can be used together with Home Assistant and uh, MQTT to control your Windows PC and also provide information about it. If you have been using IoT Link, uh, you will notice that uh, it's not really supported anymore. I'm not saying the project is dead, but definitely is on hold or something like that. That made me worried. And um, yeah, I looked for another solution. Turned out there's another piece of software called S Agent, which will do the same job. Interested? Keep on watching. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Marca, and this channel deals with home automation, home networking, and sometimes with related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's topic. S Agent comes with a nice and convenient Windows-based installer that you can download from the URL that I uh, added in the video description. After downloading and starting, you just follow the steps like I do in the video. It will ask a couple of simple questions before the installation can begin. As you will see, some of the questions are quite simple, like the interface language or the name of your PC that will appear in Home Assistant. Yeah, this one is also simple, you just want to have Hasigen started together with Windows. So enable that. On the next screen, you can enable a few deeper integrations with Home Assistant. This way, the integration becomes two-way. Home Assistant can, for example, send notification to your PC. So make sure those are ticked. An API token is like an identifier or a key that enables you or this piece of software to turn to Home Assistant and call its functions. It's generated and to grab that you need to go to Home Assistant, click your user account, scroll all the way down to the bottom and then click create token. You can name the token any way you want, but I usually name those so I can remember later who or what was it created for. In this case, is the agent on my PC. Now you just uh, select the whole token, copy it, and guess what? We will paste it into the window of Has Agent. Before proceeding by clicking next, please make sure that the IP address or host name of your Home Assistant installation is correct. And just to make sure, click Test Connection. If it's all good, click next. The next screen should be somewhat familiar. Like many other software out there integrating with Home Assistant, this one is no exception, it uses MQTT, so you will need an MQTT broker. You need to specify its IP address or hostname, then uh, optionally a username and a password that is being used for authenticating. Quick Actions is a handy little feature of Health Agent. It enables you to quickly control Home Assistant, at least some of its basic functions, directly from your PC via hotkeys. You can leave it as it is right now. You can change this configuration later anyway. The next screen is about auto updates. You can leave those on. As you can see, it's totally safe. So we can proceed to finishing this installation. After finishing configuration, on the taskbar you will see this icon, which you can double click and you will end up with this nice little configuration window. This is pretty much the main screen of Hass Agent. You can configure all of its functionality here. So just uh, let's uh, quickly take a look. This is the system status screen. It uh, normally after the first installation shows that local API OK, unless you have disabled it during the installation. Same for Home Assistant API. This means that uh, it can connect to Home Assistant and your uh, API token was in order. Satellite service, let's just skip that for now. And uh, MQTT means here that uh, S agent successfully authenticated and connected to the MQTT broker. On the other hand, after a fresh, fresh installation, these are disabled. Quick actions we will get, get back to later. Sensors, this is the main attraction here. This will provide you the way to 
get sensor information from your PC to your Home Assistant installation and commands is where you can actually control your PC from Home Assistant. So let's go through these first. For each of these functions, there is a configuration screen accessible below. So here one for quick actions, then for sensors, we have local sensors, for comments, we have this one. Now, as you can see, sensor says OK, which means I have a few sensors configured. So let's go check out our sensors. To start setting up our sensors, we first click this huge local sensors button which will reward us with another configuration window. OK, here we can define and modify and remove sensors. To add a new sensor, you click this button, add new, and once again, you will end up with a window. This freshly opened window shows you the existing sensors and uh, these three columns. Out of the three, the most important one is the first one, which tells you whether it is a multi-value or a single-value sensor. Single-value sensors give you a single value. Well, like uh, for example, CP load will give you a percentage. On the other hand, multi-value sensors like battery will give you a set of different values, different attributes, and you can pick that set apart in uh, Home Assistant and use the values you need and ignore the others, totally depending on your needs. When you are on this screen, you can see that adding a predefined sensor out of this list to Home Assistant is quite easy. So you just literally need to give it a name and an update interval and then click Store Sensor. For this CPU load, I already done this. So it's here and as you can see, it shows the last known value. Same applies for GPU load and they even added a couple more. As you will see later on, these show up in Home Assistant really nicely. As you can see, out of the box, you have a lot of different sensors. However, uh, if you have used other tools like uh, IoT Link before, then you will realize that, uh, well, it's not that much. It's better than nothing. And I expect that in the future, there will be more, sen more sensors added here with future releases of uh, Hass Agent. OK, let's wait for a second before you raise your voice in disappointment. So let me show you one neat trick. And this is where you can actually go real wide with this tool. So if you scroll down to the bottom, there's this sensor type called uh, WMI query. WMS stands for Windows Management Instrumentation. And uh, that is like in an internal set of values in, within Windows. It's like a runtime database tells you a whole lot of your computer. So what services are running, uh, how is the disk space, uh, what was the last time the PC was booted, you name it. And as you can see uh, here, you have a text field called WMI query and WMI scope. Okay, this requires a little bit of hacking because this query is like um, done or entered here in a special query language called um, WQL, which stands for Windows Query Language or WMI Query Language, whatever. Point is, you can use this to query a lot of different things from the WMI. So I've uh, already created a few examples. Just let me show you those. So for example, I have Steam status here. This one tells me whether the Steam service or actually the Steam application is running on my PC or not. If I click the modify button here, you can see the query here. So it's actually not that complicated. This is in general true for these today's query languages. And um, yeah, they are quite human readable. Want to hear even more good news? Well, the thing is, the whole WMI query sync is well documented. I mean, there's a real extensive documentation written in Microsoft style. So let's see it. OK, here we go. So as you can see, these are those objects, those classes you can query from. And uh, for those, there are those fields. This is actually programmer's documentation for Windows, but don't, don't fret, we don't need to write any code. We just use these objects to find out what we can query for. I think the easiest will be to show you via an example. So 
once again I go back here and actually I will just create a quick copy unfortunately there's no duplication or whatever win uh, button here yeah that would be nice to have but anyway we will just uh, copy and paste an existing sensor because uh, I don't want to write all those boilerplate uh, query parts and then we will add a new one okay so let's go here then call it my sensor w my query here I'm just storing it right now it won't do anything then go back to the steam one because I need to copy this part as well go back to my sensor modify again okay here we go so we have the template and now we can just uh, uh, change the object we are querying from and what we are querying for and this last part after where is pretty much a, free, a filter criteria if you are uh, experienced with uh, SQL and other query languages, you know that this filter criteria can go uh, even more complicated, not just a single value, but you can put logical expressions like and or and so on here. But for now, we will just uh, stick to a simple, a simple example. So let's go to the documentation, copy this class name. change it here so we are not interested in services but we want to know something about the operating system and we want to replace this one with an actual attribute name so let's say free physical memory because why not okay here we go and actually for having uh, such a value you don't even need a filter criteria because well it's always the same there's nothing to filter for so i will just cut this part it does w i query actually this gives you the value so this is yeah it's roughly okay i mean uh checking out the value this gives you it um in kilobytes yeah this is roughly right i mean uh, out of the 32 gigs I roughly have uh, 17, 17 gigs free so this is actually working and now I can say store sensor and then click store and activate sensor here and now if I go back to local sensors once again I can see that the value is refreshed and uh, appeared in every 10 seconds okay how the values are represented are uh, highly dependent on the actual type here for example the one with the uptime is a bit tricky basically this is not really an uptime this i created it and named it uptime but it's not really an uptime instead this is the last boot uptime and as you can see it is presented as a string so if you want to turn it into a real date and time object you need to parse it but uh, actually you can use uh, stuff like Node-RED or actually value templates within Home Assistant to process this attribute this value before proceeding to the next part of the video I want to show you something really cool just really quickly so if you go back to the documentation and take a look around you will see that uh, there's a lot of objects here and mostly these are for operating system but if you navigate a bit further you can see computer system hardware classes and there are some interesting things here temperature fan heat by bios battery whatever you name it so if you could if you scroll down for example to let's say physical memory you can see a lot of info here like for example configured clock speed voltage whatever so you can actually do this uh, to implement complex hardware monitoring and uh, forward all the data to home assistant so for example let's try this quickly windows 32 physical memory let's go back to our sensor i won't create a new one i will just modify this one quick time jump i did it already 
here we go. So I store the sensor, store and activate the sensor, go back to local sensors once again, and you can see, and this is actually the correct value. Uh, my memory sticks are running at uh, three gigahertz. So as you can see, you can use the WMI query sensor to query a lot of incredible things about your PC. Now, the next part should be to show you how you can put this whole thing into Home Assistant. So let's proceed with that one. So I open up my Home Assistant uh, and I go to this lovely dash dashboard called Demo Stuff, where I uh, usually showcase things in my videos. And as you can see already, there are some sensors set up here, but I intentionally did not set up the last one we have just created. So you will see how it will be integrated. And this is where the magic happens, or actually not magic, but a thing called MQTT discovery. So Home Assistant provides a way for uh, third-party applications to register sensors via MQTT. Without going into the underlying details about MQTT discovery, how it works and whatnot, uh, let's just note that uh, Hass Agent uses it. And because of that, you don't have to do anything to have it integrated with Home Assistant. Assuming that uh, during the initial setup, you have provided your Home Assistant details properly. I mean the MQTT uh, broker details. If that worked, then Home Assistant will pick up any new sensors fully automatically. So I can just start by editing this dashboard, going here, and guess what? I will be able to add that new sensor we have just created. So it's here already. And I save it done saving and you can see the value here. Now obviously this is uh, not the best idea, I mean for demonstration purposes because this rarely changes, but the point is that uh, now it uh, it gets its, va its value from Hass Agent. So this is extremely cool. I uh, want me to show you something even cooler. Because of MQTT discovery uh, there's a clear pattern for MQTT topics used and I add this pattern, you can integrate the whole thing with Node-RED as well. So let's just go to Node-RED. Let me go to demo stuff. Again, I just uh, set for demonstrating things. And this is an MQTT node. Now, again, because the length of the video, I don't want to go into details about how to set up this and what it is. Uh, basically, this nodes, node in Node-RED provides you a way to fetch uh, or actually to subscribe to MQTT topics. And when a message arrives to that topic, you can fetch the data from that message. So if I open this up here, you can see this topic here. And this is the most important thing you need to note. So, Home Assistant, you might remember that you had or had the ability to provide a prefix during the installation of Hass Agent and uh, the value was Home Assistant by default. Then you have Sensor, this is always Sensor, it is fixed. Then the device name, this is also something you can configure during Hass Agent installation or actually you can configure in the settings uh, of Hass Agent. So if I go to configuration, right on the main screen, you can see device name. So this device name will be presented here. And obviously this is the sensor name we have defined in Hess agent when we added the sensor. Then you have state, which is fixed just like sensor here. So this is the topic that you need to subscribe to. And, um, Basically, that's it with uh, using the output auto detect setting, which is by default the default settings for this node. Uh, node red will fetch the value here and then you can do whatever you want with it. To force a refresh and an output here, I will just go back to Hess Agent for a second, open local sensors, I just click store and activate sensors, and voila you can see that the sensor got refreshed and the value printed out here.
Now that I'm thinking of it, I think I can use this for a little prank. I mean, we have four gamers in the family and a lot of Amazon Echoes. Hmm. Funny times ahead. Okay, guys, so this is a time where I have a confession to make. Originally, I wanted to have like a 15 minute long video about Hess Agent and be done with it. But the point is, the more I use it, the more I love it. And I just realized that we haven't covered a lot of topics like quick actions, commands, still open stuff. And the video is already hitting the 10 minute mark. And this is where people stop watching videos. Sorry, that's just how YouTube and people work. I mean, the long videos, well, they get an awful view rate. So I thought about uh, stopping here until next week, and then we will continue with commands. So far, with uh, sensors, you can fetch any information from your PC. So it's time to do the opposite direction next week. I hope you don't mind cutting this video in two parts, but yeah. Let's face it, it will be just better that way. So if you have any questions or suggestions, then use the comment section of the video. Other than that, I guess it's time to say goodbye. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps me a lot and you will be notified when I upload a new video. So again, thanks for watching this and uh, hope to see you next week, next time with another video. Bye.